Welcome everyone, I'm Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the justification for building apps in Dataverse for your organization. And in particular, we're gonna make the case for model-driven apps. Why? Because they're worth it. So the topic in this video is geared for a couple different audiences. First would be the citizen developer who's maybe been stuck in the world of building business apps the free way uh, with the tools that we've been using, let's say in Office 365 for the last 10 years, uh, or somebody who's trying to really suss out if it's worth it uh, to build business apps using something like the Power Platform, and they're getting stuck at that you know, Power Platform or Power Apps premium license tier. So if you like the content in this video, you might also be interested in some other videos that both myself and Michaela have put together. Uh, these things focus on things like Dataverse and explaining, you know, when it's time to make the leap from SharePoint to Dataverse as your uh, data backend, enhancing apps with business process flows, which is a really cool one, and then also just how solutions work in the Power Platform. Check those out. So the place that many of us often started is building apps with things like Excel, Microsoft Access, maybe you started building on SharePoint lists and document libraries, InfoPath, MS Forms, right? All of those things were tools that were seemingly free. Um, and so we built a lot of business apps on those things. And then came along the Power Platform and you probably started looking at something like Canvas apps because that's also free. If you're like me, you've probably built a bunch of those apps uh, and you bent and twist them into different shapes and forms to try to get them to you know, meet the requirements of your given app or process. Uh, and you probably bumped up against a lot of limitations. So a lot of those limitations are going to be things that you're familiar with, like lack of application lifecycle management. So if you're dealing with SharePoint lists and you got to manage like a dev site and a test site and a production site, that's kind of a painful uh, thing to manage. Uh, other things like item level security, like SharePoint lets you do item level security configuration on the back end of a document library or list, but it has some holes. Relational data, so if you're familiar with building apps on SharePoint, you've probably used lookup columns, and so if you've got that going on, you know how difficult that can be to manage. All the way to things like delegation warnings that you're gonna get inside of your Canvas app. If you're building Canvas apps, you've probably wrestled a lot or spent a lot of time building the basic CRUD features, so you know, create, read, edit, delete uh, for all of the records wherever they might be. Um, and then just basic UI, UX you know, paradigms, like if you're building things in a Canvas app, it's nice but you often have to tweak uh, and you know, apply a theme individually to buttons or to forms or screens, and there's a lot of things that you just have to like, do manually. And so those are all things that we have to contend with in that free world, but we might not necessarily want to. However, if you're somebody that likes learning and innovating and making things better in general, you might have looked beyond those free tools and you started to look at something like model-driven apps and you asked yourself a question like, what is this all about? Is this actually better? Uh, what is it? If you did this, you probably opened that door just a crack. You looked at what it was like to build model-driven apps and you realized, wow, there's a lot of cool things here. Maybe it took you a little bit of time to kind of get familiar with the paradigm uh, and how it was different than building, you know, no-code, low-code apps with Canvas apps. But once you started to play with it a little bit, you probably found some pretty awesome things. So here's a list of some of the, like, the big wins in my view, the things that I like about building in model-driven apps. Uh, and those are things like all of your CRUD operations, so create, read, update, delete, all of that stuff is just done for you out of the box. You don't even have to talk about it anymore because it's just there, right? UI, UX paradigm, so the fact is that um, People will often talk about model-driven apps versus Canvas apps and the trade-off associated. So they say, well, if you want to make it look exactly the way you want it to look, um, you need to like use the Canvas app because you're painting on a Canvas and the model-driven app is data first. And so when they talk about that, I don't think they do model-driven apps justice, right? I think it implies that model-driven apps from a UI and UX standpoint are lacking um, and somehow fall short. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that Model-driven apps are responsive, they support desktop and mobile, they use modern controls and UI. Um, all of those things are just there out of the box. You don't even have to really think about them. Uh, in addition to those, things like role-based security, so the ability to actually uh, secure your data based on uh, specific groups of users or their role in the given application or record ownership, so that item level security uh, roadblock or that hurdle that you have to jump over with SharePoint data. It's actually done for the enterprise uh, on the model-driven apps or on the Dataverse side, and that's enabled by Dataverse. And then the application of business rules. So if you've built any sort of form 
based application inside of a Canvas app, you've probably applied business rules to controls, either making them visible or hiding them, or locking them, making them read only, based on certain other data in the form. That's all well and good, but you found yourself actually tweaking individual controls. And so then when you have to apply that same logic to the same set of data, let's say on another screen or another form, you find yourself either copy pasting or doing that stuff all again. All of that stuff's just built into the model driven app platform or way of building apps. So those are some of my like top items, but that doesn't even mention the fact that once you move to model driven apps and you're using Dataverse and the Power Platform environments, you can start to use things like application lifecycle management in a way that's ready for the enterprise, which solves all kinds of problems when you're moving from dev test into prod. Uh, there's a whole host of other features and I could go on and on about them, but we'd be here for an hour and you'd probably get bored to tears if I'm being honest. So the bottom line here is that if you're a developer and you start using uh, model-driven apps to build your apps in your organization, you're gonna realize really quickly that there's benefits to it and it adds up to a whole lot of design and build time. You found yourself here, but you're stuck. And you're trying to figure out how to unlock this skill for your organization, you realize it costs money. Because in order to use model-driven apps and Dataverse, you gotta pay for that uh, Power Apps premium uh, tier license, and it costs maybe $20 a month per user or $5 a month per user per app, or you gotta pay as you go. In any event, mm -hmm. you're uh, struggling with how to get past that, that price hurdle. Um, the challenge we face as kind of developers and um, you know, IT leaders who are trying to figure out how to like get past this roadblock is that most organizations do a really bad job of actually calculating the total cost of ownership for all of those free apps that they've been building for the last umpteen years. When you're looking at something like this, new licenses just simply aren't in the budget, um, but that cost of ownership for the free apps is just built into the headcount. So I've got these people working for me, they're doing stuff. Uh, they might as well be busy building apps, right? Uh, and as long as they don't have to think about a new you know, budget line item like license cost, well, they can just keep building. And so then what that means for developers is that we get stuck in this world of building apps on you know, tools and platforms that aren't really intended for the requirements or the needs of the organization. And so we bend and twist them all sorts of ways. Um, and it's quite painful, right? Uh, those tools often aren't designed well for the specific purpose that the organization has. They're not enterprise ready and all of that kind of stuff we wrestle with. So the big failure here is that assumption that the apps we've been building for free are actually free. That said, figuring out this transition is very important and here's why. Number one, you're gonna be able to build more apps faster. So uh, literally you'll be able to you know, build that proof of concept in like two hours instead of two days, right? It's that much of a difference. Or think of a scenario where you're, you, know, you need to have something production ready, but you can have it ready in two weeks instead of three months, right? That's a pretty big deal. Uh, the second thing, is overall better quality of life for your developers. Uh, so if you've got a team of citizen developers or if you're a citizen developer yourself, uh, if you've had to implement those hacks and workarounds with the free tools, um, chances are that you've done something that you weren't quite happy about and every time you have to go back and make an adjustment to that you know, application, it reminds you of that and like sometimes that can even make you just wanna quit and go to a different organization. Um, in addition to that, once you're using model-driven apps, you're gonna have all kinds of extra time to like build new things and innovate and create stuff that actually makes a difference in your organization. And then the third reason why this is important is that security is a big deal. Uh, and often people don't realize it, but with those free apps, because they're not designed uh, for enterprise level security in all of the ways that they should be, they often have back doors and holes that you know can be used you know, let's say grid view uh, in a SharePoint list, for example. And so you wanna shut those back doors to that data by using a tool that's actually designed uh, with enterprise security in mind. So if you're to the point where you've decided, I wanna break through this barrier and start building model-driven apps, there's three particular things that you can change in your mindset and approach to solve this problem. The first thing that you need to change is you need to actually start tracking the total cost of ownership for the free apps that you've been building. Uh, this is important because if you don't start doing this, you can't really understand or do a comparison between the old way and the new way. So change the mindset of your team and the, the leadership team so that they understand what it's actually costing to build those free apps. The second thing you need to do is you need to fix your equation. So instead of having nothing versus license cost, you need to have 
how much it costs to build, how much it costs to maintain, plus license cost. Then you can actually do a real comparison apples to apples uh, against you know, your free version or your free apps and your model-driven app. All right, so let's look at the math here. The first thing that you need to figure out is you need to figure out what it actually costs you to build that app that you're building. Uh, and so this is the big question mark here. This is something that people ignore. They don't understand all of the factors that go into it. They think about in, primarily in terms of what it costs to build it. So if it costs uh, like one full-time employee, six months to build it, maybe that's 80 grand or something like that uh, in cost. But then nobody ever really thinks about the future costs. So what does it cost every month to support that thing for 12 months, right? And so how many full-time employees are involved in that effort? Um, and so there's, that is the total cost of ownership that, that ultimately needs to be solved for uh, in our equation. Okay, so let's put a quick example together. Uh, what I mentioned before was like, let's say you've got, let's say two full-time employees build this thing, it takes them six months. Uh, that's gonna be, let's say 160K. Um, so, and then you've gotta factor in, what does it actually cost to maintain and support that application over the course of 12 months? So how much does it cost every month, uh, let's say, to support it? Um, and if you multiply that over 12 months, let's say it's another full-time employee, maybe that's 100K. And so then what you end up with is 260K in total cost for building the app plus a year, right? Um, and you can extrapolate that annual cost, right? It's gonna con continue to cost you more money to add features to support it as you continue to move forward. So the third thing that you need to do is take my recommendation and apply a factor of 10X uh, as your difference when estimating, should I build it in a model-driven app versus should I build it in a Canvas app? Uh, so often those are the, gonna be the two things that you're gonna juxtapose against each other. Uh, one, you know, being with Dataverse requires license. Canvas app, maybe I use SharePoint as my backend. I don't need a license. But you need to really understand the trade-off between in the cost of building those two apps. And I will tell you from experience, I think it's 10X. Uh, I've talked with Michaela a little bit. She generally agrees with that assessment as well. And so that's something that, you know, as you're estimating, you can take that 10X factor if you don't want to like really understand the nitty gritty details of your estimate. 10X is a pretty safe place to start. And if you don't believe me, just think of a few areas where you're going to gain that benefit. CRUD, I don't have to build, create, read, update, delete all of the logic uh, in my buttons and actions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, security is gonna be, number one, better, uh, but just kind of built in and pervasive throughout the app. I don't have to you know, build special rules on my forms and things like that. Form and list customization, super easy to do. It's all WYSIWYG and model-driven apps. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's what you see is what you get, but for business apps, it's plenty good enough. Um, and so all, those are the areas where you're gonna like really pick up that factor of 10X in build time and ultimately that translates down the road to maintenance and management of that app as well. The two things that you're going to find when you start to do this, uh, one of those is going to be the cost to actually build and maintain the model driven version of an app over the free version of an app. You're going to find that it's way cheaper and faster to build the model driven app. Uh, and then the second thing that you're going to realize is when you start doing that cost comparison, you're going to line up that licensing cost against all of the other things and that licensing cost I think you're going to find is going to be much diminished and it's not even going to be a factor at all. And so let's do the math on that uh, equation. So this would be something like how many users do you have times the license cost for those users to use that app times 12 months. So it's usually it's a monthly license cost. Um, and so my supposition is that the cost to build this same thing as a model driven app using Dataverse would be x divided by 10. Um, so if we're doing the, working out the math on this particular scenario, and let's say I just had 1,000 users, and I'm using the per app license model, so that's going to be times $5 per user times 12 months. Okay, that ends up being 60 k And my cost for the app as I built it before, plus a year of support and maintenance, was 260K. Uh, so if I come over here and I say 260 over 10, my supposition is that that ends up being 26K. So you got your 60K plus 26K works out to be 86K. So 
by that math, it makes way more sense to build this thing in Dataverse as opposed to your old school .NET, whatever it needs to be. All right, so hopefully you found this helpful. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's look past license costs when you're thinking about evaluating model-driven apps. Don't get stuck on that. Take it one level deeper, uh, apply the mindset that I talked about here, and you'll find that they're actually really worth it. All right, so if you found this video helpful and you wanna see more of this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're someone who's on this same journey and you have some thoughts on how to assess moving to model-driven apps from the free apps and how to deal with you know licensing costs and presenting that to leadership, post a comment. We'd just love to hear that feedback.